meant we are continuing with a presentation that has a title that contains a word we've already heard several times several times today alternatives how can switzerland profit from the alternative investments boom that's a topic of the next presentation professor meyer is head of the center of alternative investments and risk management at zurich university of applied sciences thank you very much for coming to Tafikon, mr meyer thank, thank you, you. I just got a met message um, and the message is spectacular mission uh, it succeeded the mini labor file landed secure on a comet cherry. I hope that uh, the Swiss asset management will also do a point landing some years from now but I think our problem is we don't know really from where we want to start this mission. <clears throat> and from two large events during the last or the last 48 hours, I really learned that our problem is we do not really know where we are. We know where we want to go. We have the asset management initiative. They precisely want to be, uh, know where they want to be some years from now, but the problem is we really don't know where we are. <coughs> so, uh, Switzerland is uh, still the country of wealth management. Uh, private banking became shaky. Asset management has a minor position. Alternative investments, yeah, you see it, very small. Um, we have the large players. What I learned from the large players during the last 48 hours is that they are looking still for the integrated model. The lead is the wealth management and the asset management is a kind of supporting wealth management. You will never succeed with asset management, a standalone business with this model. That's my personal opinion. <clears throat> the Anglo-Saxon packing order is different since many decades. Performance is king. Asset management, these are the leaders or leading companies there in the US. Uh, alternative investment uh, is becoming more important in the future. And wealth management, well, that's distribution or sales. And when it comes to asset management, we don't have, we have a lot of figures. <laughs> I just took some from consultancy companies. Here, our two big or large banks have positions 13 and 39. Uh, what are alternative investments? I have only two, two characteristics. One is not yet mainstream investments. I hope uh, this picture I can show again maybe 10 years from now. I am a hedge fund man. Oh, that's so mainstream. And alternative investments always are illiquid investments. Hedge funds are the mother of alternative investments because these are investment strategies using all the assets available and during the last years, even real assets down at the bottom here are used by some managers because opportunities there are larger, risks and illiquidity are also larger, but that's the rule of the game. You take risk and you get something for it. Um, <clears throat> fund of hedge funds are not, not so in favor of Swiss investors for the moment, but these are really the grandmothers of alternative investments. And they are used by scientists as representatives when they measure performance to find out what, uh, what the performance of alternative investments is. We do since many years analysis on it. You see here cum cumulative alpha. It looks not great, 
But an average fund of hedge fund is not a good investment. <laughs> you have to have selection methods to find the better ones from them. Uh, we can, for, for all the uh, uh, fund of funds on our platform, do beta, beta uh, contributions. And what you see here is the contributions for a, a median fund of hedge funds. And you see that uh, the alternative beta premium was positive for the last year since, since uh, 2008. And traditional beta has not contributed over this period positively. But after the big shock, it, bec it, it became uh, a little bit uh, positive again. What I want to say, people usually don't accept it, but uh, we are able and many are able to do decompositions of these risks and returns for these grandmothers of alternative investments. Why are alternative investments booming? They are really booming. Um, you see that from these statistics taken from McKinsey, quite a recent uh, research was done. Actually, alternative investments have a share of about 11% of financial assets. And they have grown at 10% rate over the last eight years, compared to traditional assets, bonds, and equities, it's only 5%. <coughs> this is a very important chart. It invented by McKinsey, or measured by McKinsey. I hope uh, it, it's in a way uh, in the right direction. Uh, the prediction is that in the year uh, 22, um, revenues from alternative investments will make a share of 40%. And I think this is a very important message for the Swiss alternative investment industry, which is just the peak of asset management, namely that um, asset management counties or companies who do not participate in the alternative investment space will not have access to this 40% share of revenues. Prime brokerage, everything is part of this revenue share. These are very optimistic forecasts for alternative investments, but uh, not many of these statistics are available. Uh, that's why I just took this one. So why we have we had such strong growth in the alternative area and why it, it shall be grow in the future. Three reasons, the low interest rate environment, diversification as a strategy of most of investors, and bank regulation. What you see here as a statistic um, is that in the United States, more than half of loans are given by non-banks or shadow banks. In Switzerland, maybe 99% of loans uh, are given by banks. It's a normal way of intermediation by banks. But this will change. The reason is regulation. About Swiss institutions and their behavior with respect to alternative investment, it looks not nice, really not nice. Uh, since 2008, alternative shares, percentage shares of investments of pension plans uh, have stagnated, as you can see from these upper lines. And hedge funds even decreased from a share of above 3% to now about 2%, these red uh, bars. If we go into the pension plans, this is the statistics um, we have done ourselves at our center. It's, it's more or less public information. Um, shows that uh, the average alternative share is 5% to 2 or 13. And most of, pen of the large pension plans uh, use alternative investments but uh, the, the allocations are very different from plan to plan. 
And what you also can see is that hedge fund allocations, some have very large, um, very large allocations, but many even of the large pension plans have no hedge fund allocations. From U.S. studies about U.S. pension plans, we know that the, the, uh, the most successful pension plans, sophistic, uh, sophisticated pension plans, have large alternative shares and they outperform within the alternative space, meaning they have selection capability uh, in this space and that's one precondition to be successful with alternative investments to have selection capabilities. So this picture is a picture a little bit of a disaster and still uh, rooted in what has happened in 2008. Now, a very nice, uh, very nice survey result. It comes from Deloitte. It's almost too good to be true. It concerns wealth management. Switzerland is, is just the greatest when it comes to wealth management. You must know if that's true or not. <laughs> I'm skeptical. I think we are very good when it comes to wealth management. All these uh, diligent tasks, we do well. Regu even regulation is rated here quite well. I'm, I'm not sure if they knew about feedback or feedback on the, all these things. But still take it, take it for sure. That makes life a little bit uh, easier. Um, when we go into the asset management, it looks again a little bit less nice. Um, comparing the upper and the lower panel of this statistic, do not try really to understand it. Uh, it shows the disaster which was produced by regulation. Uh, we have now a share, an asset, an asset share, uh, um, globally measured of 1% concerning Swiss domiciled fund. If we take sales of funds, Switzerland sells a lot, in Switzerland a lot of Luxembourg funds are sold, for example, then our share is 4%. Meaning that the Swiss fund place has, has uh, muted from a place where we had our own domicile to a place where, he, where we have mostly foreign domiciles for our funds. What we can also read from these figures, and this is a, it's not very recent, this statistic, but it's a very broad scientific study which, which was done. We also see that we have a scale problem, a size problem. Our funds in Europe and Switzerland too have a size of only about one third or 30 percent of the sizes of the US funds. That's another problem we have. And so what I also heard is that in these speeches in the morning and from our own event uh, uh, two days ago, some, some players, uh, asset managers or wealth managers, has already, have already given up the, the place to the large uh, Anglo-Saxon providers. That makes me a little bit sad to give up so early. That's a picture coming from our own database, Fund of Hedge Fund database, and that explains a lot. If you want to explain a, a crash, you don't have to try to explain the crash, you have to try to understand the, the boost, the boosting period here. And what happened is that um, in the Fund of Hedge Fund area, um, we had overselling of hedge funds and then the burst uh, after the crisis, and it, it's still decreasing during the last years, and that's a consequence of, um, of um, false uh, marketing, false uh, sales, uh, not good structures, but also part of it, I would say, is a regulation disaster which, which, was, uh, which happened uh, during the crisis concerning fund of hedge funds. Uh, the good news, you can't see it from this chart, is 
um, during the last few months, we see a turnaround. The hedge funds are booming anyway globally, but in Switzerland we have uh, the turnaround, meaning net assets are increasing again a little since some months, and we hope it, it will hold for the next years. Now I tried to do some uh, statistics or figures to find out market shares. <clears throat> I want to emphasize one point. Um, uh, institutional asset management um, depends on the whole market of pension funds. Uh, the Swiss pension fund is quite large with uh, more than 700 billion uh, assets. Um, globally, it makes 2.5% share. That's not too big, but at least it, it's um, a starting point for uh, an, um, at least a niche place in the global asset management area. But what one has to know is that the large sophistic, sophisticated pension plans have only a very small proportion which is Swiss asset management content for now. I could ask in the last month two large public pension plans. One is a large insurance company and one told me that his Swiss content for external bought in asset management services is 3%. Another one, very large one, told me 7%. That's about our asset management uh, home, home base uh, pension plans. You see other market shares here, estimates. We estimate now the share for fund of hedge funds about at 50%. It was maybe one-third, maybe even 40% before the crisis. So we have a lot to catch up. <laughs> That's the good news for me. But uh, we have to find out how to do that. I come to the conclusions. I have four conclusions. <laughs> it's, these are not the cooking book <laughs> things uh, for our uh, S-Pharma Swiss uh, fund, uh, fund and Asset Management Association, but, but maybe some directions. So first is, before we know where we want to land, we have to know where we are now. And um, so my suggestion will be for the next year, <laughs> starting this year, to do analysis, to do research about the asset management industry in Switzerland. The second point, regulation. I think it was not mentioned today, but Switzerland is really in a sandwich position between the United States, in a way, and, and the European regulation. And if you are a sandwich, no, if you are only the beef within the sandwich, you don't have to be perfect. <laughs> you just have to be good enough uh, to be taken with the bread. <laughs> It together. And so the Swiss finish is really a killer strategy, I think, for our situation where we are. And I hope everybody tries uh, to convince um, regulators to become more pragmatic for the future. And the situation which concerns our um, OA kites, it's a supervision for pension plans, a new institution this one-dimensional cost optic, optic is really a killer, it was said already today, for the alternatives. Uh, point three, um, we should care much more about the culture of asset management. And from my perspective, what is really missing in the Swiss asset management industry is a research and development culture. I tell just one example we could convince a research team from a large bank. They were really enthusiastic for our research project. It was about performance-oriented 
um, um, uh, strategy using, using um, ESG, ecological social governance indicators. And we had set up a lot of uh, ideas how to do this project and it would have had a very good chance even to be co-sponsored by our government, by our transfer research uh, body called um, Commission for Innovation and something. And this project was not able to be set up because this large banking institution could not bring up 25,000 Swiss francs. And the project would have had a total volume of between half a million and one million. And this is one example which, which, we, um, me, which, we, can, which we meet very often. Usually we find later on small players, asset managers, service providers who like very much to do this kind of government sponsored projects. Another point is about R&D. Uh, Swiss banks have been quite generous for sponsoring uh, research, but I think the problem is they sponsor uh, a kind of rocket science research with the results of uh, bringing universities into the top journals and what is not considered that this is a production process using decades uh, until it becomes effective for the industry. And <clears throat> the approach should be much more transfer-oriented research in the asset management, but the tips about how asset management functions have to be changed and there have to be the idea of building up a kind of research and development unit and it has to be sourced before coming up with products. My last point, professionalization of institutional asset management. Um, <clears throat> as I already said, the sophistic pension plans which make the large volumes have gone. <laughs> the, these pension plans have to be, uh, yes, uh, acquired from new by our asset management, um, but uh, that's not a task for, for some years, that's a task for decades. And when it comes to the smaller or medium-sized pension plans, these are still, I think, very important clients for most of the asset managers in Switzerland. The pity there is really that they are, they are uh, very much steered by consultants it's not an industry, you, you can uh, mention them with one hand. There are a few consultants which have done, in my mind, with respect to consultancy, with respect to investment, uh, investment uh, questions, have done uh, not, not good for the asset management industry in Switzerland. And it's not really performance oriented now, it's much more oriented towards, let's say, uh, job uh, preservation for pension plan uh, employees and so on. And that, uh, that's a very important difference between the Anglo-Saxon culture of the institutional investors between here and over the Atlantic. To conclude, um, <clears throat> we know where we want to go, so let's find out where we stand now. Thank you, Professor.